I heard about this crazy family in New Hampshire and um, it turns out I was right. Look at them, they're doing burpees here in the middle of nowhere. They apparently have some uh, obstacle course in the woods. Um, they've completely lost their mind. Good morning, Joe. Okay, so welcome back, Spartan Up. We are in Boston, and today we are talking to Carrie and Marcelo Glazer, two really enthusiastic and very intelligent people, actually um, teaching over at Dartmouth, if you've heard of it. And um, they are going to teach us how to uh, really excel in sport and business and... Science. Science. They say it's all the same which thing. Which I love. Science is great. So um, on this journey, we will take Colonel Nye, myself, Sephra, Dr. Johnny, Joe, and Marion. So let's go meet these people and wait till you see what they put in their backyard. <laughs> hey, I am here for Spartan Up podcast in a secret location in the woods with Marcello and Carrie Glazer. Did I say that Gleiser. right? Glazer. Glazer. We've got a uh, psychologist, so mm -hmm. she's, she's a genius, and then we've got a scientist who's a genius, and they're going to tell us how to get out of our comfort zone, why we should get out of our comfort zone, how we could be successful. We're going to have we're going to have all kinds of stuff here. I'm going to give you back the mic. Clip that, clip that on if you can. Thank you. And um if you guys don't know it, I mean, the whole point of the podcast is to um, teach the audience how to become successful. What attributes do we need? How do we get ahead? I'll fix that wire while, we, be inside. while we do that. So I'll start out. Um, <laughs> interestingly, if we were having this discussion a few years ago, you would have had a very different answer. We worked a whole lot. We were outside a whole lot less. Once we found Spartan racing, we really transformed our lives. I mean, we were we were four like mile a, like a joggers, TV but it's okay. true. It's really true. I mean, we we would run four miles a few times a week, you know, and take off a half an hour a few times a week to go jogging. And then, you know, one of my patients actually introduced me to Spartan racing, and I came home and I told Marcel, I said, "There's this great thing, and I'm going to sign us up." And you know, I signed us up for a beast, not having ever done anything. No, and that was a turn, the beast. Killington beast. And that was really a turning point for us because we, we kind of rounded out our lives and started spending a lot more time working out, a lot more time. I and mean, we built this obstacle course in our backyard. Um, can, I, can I just interject? Yeah. Your lives are not rounded out. You've gone off over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Most people don't have an obstacle course in the backyard just that's, for clarity. Well, so don't try this. Let's say we have a little problem with intensity. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> An exaggeration. Um, <laughs> so, and you know, in my case, um, I'm a professor of physics and astronomy at Dartmouth, and you know, I could be farther away from this sort of activity than a theoretical physicist that thinks about the Big Bang and black holes and all that kind of crazy stuff. And it turns out that if you really start to think about that, science is all about going beyond the known. It's all about pushing the boundaries, in this case, of our knowledge of nature. But it's a challenge. It's a constant challenge. We're always pushing against our limits intellectually, right? Like we're trying to understand things that we really have no clue, right? And we often work in groups as well because, you know, the idea of the lonely scientist is, is a myth, really. You know, we're always working together to come up with the best possible ways of solving the new mystery, right? And I, something clicked inside. I said, you know what? The physical and the mental, they are connected that way. And what I'm doing professionally to try to go beyond the boundaries of the known, you know, into this mystery, is the same thing with my body, you know? And I say, how far can I push myself? You know, can I go all the way to breaking down? And I have to say, you know, a couple of times during the Killington Beast, I was broken down, you know? You, you went into the black hole. I <laughs> went into the black <laughs> hole. <laughs> you really got an understanding it of was the black hole. hole. Absolute black hole. But he got I, out, we get out. That's the difference, you know, right? That's the difference. That's, <laughs> that bucket brigade, you know, again. You know, why? And I'm like, come on, you know, that I'm good with <laughs> You know, that was the second one. I'm like, it is not necessary. <laughs> right? But it teaches you something. It teaches you something about yourself and it gives you tremendous discipline and inner drive, which is exactly what I've been doing in a completely different setting for a long time in my life. Mm. Right. It translates. You need that discipline and that drive in professional settings and, you know, in our work and our, even in parenting. I mean, how many times a day do you yeah. find your own limits as a parent? And, you know, and, and as a psychologist working with, with patients who are suicidal, I mean, you have to learn to 
control your fear. You can't get freaked out with that. You have to stay really steady. You have to stay really present so that there's a lot of overlap. You're building capacities out there on the course that you're using in all these different areas of your life. And it gives you the sense of competence and competence like, all right, I can do more than I think. So when you hit that limit, you know, whether it's a wall or a bucket brigade or a Tarzan swing, you know, and you're like, I don't know if I can do this. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack it. I'm gonna go for it, and you start to have that attitude for other things in, in life too. Do you think? Um, and we we talk about it. Talking to his mic. Oh, just leave it. No, it's fine. I'll lean over. Do you think um, each generation that goes by gets softer, and and maybe and may, maybe puts a new line in the sand and how far they can go, so we actually don't go as far. I mean, certainly technology is becoming more advanced and things like that. But but as far as physical limits. I think that uh, what I see a lot is, um, is that because of technology, because of our dependence on digital stuff, right, the, the iPhones and everything, I think the new generation is less engaged physically than we used to be, you know. To be a kid in the past was to be out work, you know, playing around, right? And now the playing around really means sitting down and, you know, connecting, you know, via Wi-Fi with a friend of yours to play some game. And I think that's a loss. And uh, we try to not do that this in this house, although it's hard, it's a struggle, even for us as parents, you know. So... Can you imagine, um, can you imagine back in the 1700s or the 1800s where it was, we would be having this conversation? You know, they used to drive on horses, and now they, <laughs> now they have cars. <laughs> like, it just keeps happening every generation, right? We used to hunt Indians, and Indians used to hunt us. I think you're right, you know, right. so do we go back to the Paleolithic, you know, and then we go back to cave yeah, and, and right. hunter gathering? I don't think so, but what we can do is we can go back to what we're good at and we evolved to be runners, you know, we evolved to jump and that's what we're doing for, for hundreds of thousands of years and, and it's great to go back to that and to feel that connection with our ancestors, you know, what human beings are really all about. And, and I feel that we do this, yeah. you know, in a small part, playing around and, and doing our obstacles and stuff. And from my perspective also, uh, so much of the symptomatology that I see as a mental health professional comes from people not being embodied. I mean, they get anxious and they're completely in their head. It's like a tire in the mud that just spins and spins and spins. And it's because they, there's this disconnect, even for some people who are in shape, um, but definitely for people who don't have any relationship with their body. And so a lot of it is, is kind of descending their consciousness down to realize, I'm a physical creature. I have a body down here. It's an enormous resource, right. you know, and how can we get in touch with it so that you're leading a more whole life and you're a more whole person? So it's really, it's also very integral into the way that I no, practice, the, the which Greek, is... The Greeks used to say, right, mind and... You, the Greeks used to say mind and body, and, and I think... There's we, no separation. I think we, it's becoming more and more separated, yeah. right, with every, with every uh, decade that goes by. Do you remember that movie Wally, where they had the guys in the wheelchairs and the little screens in front of them, and they were all, you know, just melting out over their chairs because they were so fat, and you know, it was just there were there was no embodiment there, and and I think that's the risk. So you know, we backslide a little with with the technology obsession, and it's more how are we going to catapult ahead again, using it that as a resource, but not having it be a limitation for us. Yeah, I don't I, think we found that yet, but I, I figured we get a few. Get I figured we get a few people out to races. Maybe we get a few burpees done. I didn't expect this to happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have gone off the rails. <laughs> yeah. We've been known to Wally do that. In the other direction. We've been known to do that a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so, so the whole point of the podcast is how could somebody become? Right. I, I got to lean way over. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> hug. Yeah, yeah. Um, how does somebody become more successful? What I, and so, at the core of it, what I'm hearing is uh, push your limits. Um, mind and body. Um, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What other things can we learn from, from uh, science or psychology that, mm -hmm. that help people um, get ahead? Hey, they're in the workforce. They're stuck. Uh, a lot of people are victims in their own minds. Like, oh, everything goes wrong for me or I'm not motivated. Or I think one of the things that you learn is that it's okay not to reach your goal. I think what's really important is to keep trying to reach a goal, you know, because people get, uh, they give up, right? Say, oh man, you know, I'm going to start running, but after a month, it's, I'm not getting the runners high and this thing sucks and I'm just going to give up. And, uh, 
And that's exactly wrong. You know, that what is important is the persistence, you know, is to, is to persevere on a goal, even if you don't reach it. And, and, and I see that happening to me all the time in Spartan races. You know, of course, I'm, I'm not a kid anymore, and uh, I, I'm very happy when I beat a bunch of 20 and 30 year olds, you know, but there are some that I'm never going to beat, and that's okay. And you have to deal with that, you know, and, and, and but it, not just at races and, and anything in life. Well, you transfer all this knowledge to me is a big metaphor. You know, the whole Spartan thing to me is a metaphor for life. And I, I, every lesson that I'm learning as I'm training and as I'm racing, I am trying to bring it back to my life. And I have to say, it makes a huge difference, you know, because you just do get tougher. You know, you get tougher in everything that you do because you hurt when you're doing it and you understand that hurt is good. You know, I mean, hurting is okay. And it's part of growing up and sure. growing stronger. So it's, it's... Any thoughts from the psychological side? Yeah, um, I think what limits a lot of people is their beliefs about themselves and their stories about themselves, which become well-grooved and well-worn patterns in the brain. I mean, they're really physical neuro pathways that kind of reinforce over and over again the same story and the same limitation. I can't do that. I am not a runner. I am this, I am that. And so that there's something about loosening your attachment to those stories and to those beliefs and just starting to play in there, to weave in there a little bit, the, the shadow of the doubt, like maybe I can do that. Maybe, maybe I can go up to that with, with a clear mind and just see what I can do. And it doesn't matter if I can't do it, I can do some of it, you know? And so I'm constantly working with patients in, the, in, in a therapy session. And I think it's very similar when, you're, when you start working with people out in, a, uh, in the forest or on a course, just see, just see. Like, let there be mystery, let there be possibility, let there be the unknown, and let reality define itself as you're going along, as opposed to you're constructing something in your head that then becomes a limitation. Doesn't, isn't, isn't that the big problem? People get into these patterns, and, yep. and the same thing happens to them over and over. I say to people all the time, or companies, if you're perfectly happy the way things are, then keep doing what you're doing. Right. But who's, who's right. ever happy, right? right. We, we want to go beyond where we currently are. We want to push limits. We want to meet new people. And, um, and the brain is neuroplastic, right? right? Mm -hmm. so, so actually, I, I, the way you guys would know better than me, but the brain actually changes right. when we stress right. the body right. and we go through something like a Killington bucket brigade. <laughs> the brain changes. Right. It changes with new experiences. And yeah. the brain is constantly accommodating and integrating new experiences. So it's how you create those new experiences that kind of wake up and expand the brain. And there's always these two forces. You know, there's the force of resistance. I don't want to change. I'm going to show up to you, but really I don't want to change. Right. And then there's the, 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 um, the force or the pulse of transformance, right? Which is, I think, this natural impulse in us to grow and expand and transform. Sure. And you know, if, it's, it's how do you privilege the force of transformance over resistance? The resistance is gonna be there. And mostly you just tell people, it's gonna be there, just minimize it, every just day. try and ignore it. All right, day, right, 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 right. You're like, am I gonna wake up at six o'clock in the morning? That's my, <laughs> that's my, that's my Achilles heel. I don't like to wake up early. I know, exactly. <laughs> we take it for granted, yeah. right? But we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, I, I interviewed uh, Stephen Pressfield, a great author, wrote uh, Gates of Fire, along with a bunch of other hmm. books. He's right, the yeah. preeminent expert on Sparta. And he said, um, it finally occurred to him, every single day he wakes up, he's going to face resistance. Once you accept that, yes. then it's just a battle right. you're going to accept. Right. Right? Right. It's never going to be smooth and easy going. If it is, there's something wrong and you're not at your limit. I mean, that's a, yeah. that should clue you in right away, right? Sure. All right. Well, with that, anything else? We want I'm to good. You're I'm good? good. We're good? Yeah. We're good. With that, we're going to go run the course. And um, there's apparently a couple of monkeys <laughs> loose in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get up there. Awesome. Get up there. Get it. You got it. A swing. Face <laughs> <Ace> the resistance. <laughs> Fight gravity. We yes. It. We got it. The brain has changed. How awesome was that backyard? Uh, pretty cool. Isn't Very that cool? cool. I yeah. mean, they, it, literally, they have a Spartan course in the backyard. I can't tell you how many races they come to. Incredibly intelligent. He's like a hero down in Brazil. Um, I don't know. What would you think? 
I, I loved when they said uh, they'd sort of uh, balance their life out. And you said, this isn't balanced. <laughs> this is awesome, but it's not balanced. Um, but, you know, the idea of, of that, and he talked about uh, with um, science, he said, as a researcher, it's all about exploring new frontiers and seeing what we can learn that's new and how far we can take things. And, and then they said that when they got into sport, originally they felt like it was like different, like it was, it was you know, a new thing for them until they realized it's what they've always done. It's about, you know, how can we tap into ourselves? And she talked about the physicality versus the emotional side when she's working with uh, um, psychology clients, their patients, and the idea that um, the more in tune you are with your body, the more in tune you are with your mind. And so it's just a really neat, if I'm going to take a word out of your book, synthesization of, uh, or book. synthesizing of, um, of, of all those different disciplines. And that was really cool. Um, there's one conversation that I wanted to, to, to expand on where they were talking about they want to take things further and further than you're saying about uh, creating a baseline. And you, I think you asked about um, if, if this generation, the next generation, if each generation were taking it easier on ourselves. Yeah, I think every generation um, since, I don't know, Neanderthal <laughs> has been going easier and easier and easier. And it's, it's the parents' fault, right? We want better for our kids and we protect them. And I mean, just think back. Back in the 1800s, it was, a, it was a lot harder on people, right? Just 20 years ago, it was a lot harder on people. Yeah, I, and, and when, Sorry, go ahead. And then I was going to say, I, I agree with you that it was harder physically. I, I think there are many other challenges today that they didn't have back then. So you're, you're, you're changing simplicity a, a for physicality. You know, so, so I believe we are softer because it's easier, but I think we have a lot more we have an equal or more amount of stressors on us that makes life different kind of stress, right? Different be, kind of stress be, for sure. I, I, the but stre- I don't think it we goes are away. wired. I think right. We are wired to deal with the stress of hey, there's a lion. I don't know if we're yeah, wired. Or survival. Yeah, I don't know if we're wired yet to no, deal with the she, stress she of traffic. She talked about going back to our ancestry. Yeah. You know, and, and, and when she was saying be connected to your body, otherwise, I, I like the phrase she said. You're, you know, anybody that's been in Alabama and seen the the tire in the mud, right? It's just spinning and you're going nowhere. Right? What we need to be connected to, sorry, Johnny, cool. is the earth. And what's really getting stressed is the earth. Okay. <laughs> is it real? So, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm, well, okay. Yeah, I'm just me, saying. Give me my lesson. You know what I heard the problems were? Cats. There's 100 what? million cats. Go in to United Rome. States. In the United States? In the United States. What should you do, what should you do, what do when you're in Rome? You need something that eats cats. Sorry, animal lovers. That's typical. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to totally hijack no, but, this for a second. Because earlier when I asked that question about um, generation after gen- yeah. generation, are we getting softer? And, <laughs> and, but I think what's interesting with that, like, I get in, in a big picture that's the case, that it, we're wired to make things easier. And, and, and yet in the middle of that, there's always the outlier who pushes things further. And it's amazing because like there's still world records getting broken all the time. And I think about a a snowboarder like uh, Travis Rice who has the the great new movie called uh, Fourth Phase and he did Art of Flight. Like things you just couldn't imagine. Jeremy Jones like just coming down things that nobody would ever have done ever 10 years ago and filming it in ways that nobody would ever do. And we watch this and it's so funny because I keep hearing about how, and you're right, that the the masses are getting soft and the masses are are taking it easier. And yet in the middle of that, there's always these people and, and you see them in, in Spartan Race. And in, 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 yeah, not, not all progress is bad. Well, and, 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 and it's incredible that, not, that, that in the middle of when society is making it easier and society is telling you take it easy and all this, there's still, and I, I, I have huge faith in, in, in our, our, our human species, that there are always going to be those people that still keep pushing things. And, and it, 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 it creates new ground for all of us. We're trying to get the Mars. Oh. The yeah, Mars. Yeah, sure. Exactly, right? yeah. I mean, so, sure. so while we're being so lazy, our best and brightest are doing the math and the science to get us to Mars. Or, or sometimes our dumbest are out there pushing beyond <laughs> <laughs> I think That's right. yeah, beyond That's their right. endurance level. I think, I think also, though, you acknowledge that, yeah, maybe some things are getting easier, maybe in certain parts of the U.S., but certainly for a lot of people in different parts of the U.S. and a lot of people all over the world, it's a really different scenario and paradigm. And, well, I mean, you've traveled and been in, in, the, in the trenches, as it were, a lot right, more relevant. Than, United, uh, but I don't think Tim's saying that, it, that it's easy for everyone in the world. He said, Saying that we're wired to try and make it easier for ourselves, so he's not saying that nobody struggles. Yeah, I. Well, it reminds me of a. I don't know if this is relevant. A tree that isn't quite growing at the. But rate that no, it, no, no, no. My, my my friend made a beautiful documentary called *The Eagle Huntress*, and it follows the first 13-year-old Mongolian female to ever be mentored um, in caretaking a golden eagle, and it was just one of these like 
beautiful paradigm shifting uh, occurrences where she completely challenged the norm when it's been a completely male dominated sport and they walk her through learning how to hunt with an eagle and it's like the most cinematographically beautiful film I've ever why am I telling this story? It's a you know it's a, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's it's a great one and and the it, eagle it, has landed and it brings <laughs> and, and, it, and it brings us back a bit to our um, our podcast subjects. Oh <laughs> no, right, no, no, right. seriously, we're in their backyard. Let's no, go back. It, we're, we're back in the backyard. There are no golden eagles, but it is just the idea that um that it. There's something to be said for being the person, whether it's the filmmaker who's the first one to make this film, whether it's the scientist who's the first one to discover that new galaxy, whether it's the person who runs a marathon that they never, ever thought they could do. Um, we all have the opportunity to go and grow and reach for more. And, uh, and as so many people have told us along the way, and to inspire others to as well, which is really cool, to, to find ways to be out there um, sharing that. So with that said, burn your couch. Tune in to Spartan. <laughs> Kill your cats, apparently. Kill your cat. Learn how to hunt with eagles. <laughs> or, or come watch us live, because we don't want to actually do this yeah. on, through technology. We'll be so. in That's Vegas right. November 14th. We should 14. probably put out where we're going to be ahead of time. That's a good get, idea. Get an audience. Well, we did, and Brian, we we did and Brian Lynch showed up, so I'm not sure that's such a good idea. <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Just another morning in the Gleiser household. Go ahead. He could probably almost do it by himself because he lowers himself down. This is the killer side. This is very hard. That's kind of cool. Ready? Go for it. Oh, no. This looks fun. Ow. Ow. Nice work. Nice. You're part monkey. He really is. He totally is. <laughs>